My name's Rachel Perry, I'm from the University of Technology, Sydney. Um, I also work in a centre called the Australian Centre for Child and Youth, um, located at the university and we do lots of interesting work with schools and um, in a whole lot of different ways. Um, now I wear lots of different hats at the university, um, but today I'm sort of connecting in my hat, uh, wearing my hat that connects with the whole concept of um, English in terms of drama um, as a genre, um, theatre, etc. Um, now about, just a little bit about my background, over the past sort of 20 odd years I've worked a lot in um, directing, performing, writing for theatre as well as teaching um, in relation to English and drama. Um, so now I'm involved from an educational perspective at the university level in that as well. So um, without further ado, um, in recent years, there's so many innovative ways to think about um, performance in terms of technology. And um, when we're writing for uh, theatre and performance, it's, it's really critical to build in, um, as you'll see through a lot of the examples I'm going to give you today, to actually build in what technology can offer you and to bring it back to the very beginning stages of writing for performance, um, but also when you're reading scripts and, and taking into account those kind of, that actually as a genre or text type, to actually think about what technology can offer, especially if you're interested in taking into that next step of actually putting the performance together or the production together yourself. So. Today, um, I'm actually going to cover a little bit about what technology in drama and theatre actually might be. Thinking about technology in performance itself, so how it's embedded in both the design and the creative process as well as seeing how it's a reflection of society. Um, and also technology for performance. Um, so the idea of video conferencing, which obviously is the way we're connecting today, um, but how, what that means in terms of audience and performer interactivity. And I've got a lot of images and things for you to look at, um, which will hopefully inspire you a little bit as well. So, what do we mean by technology? Um, well, you can Google search it, um, and when you do, um, you get a definition, something like the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes. Um, Wikipedia, another favourite of a lot of people, um, talks about technology referring to the making, modification, usage and knowledge of tools, machines, techniques, techniques, crafts, systems, methods of organisation. Um, but the key point as well, though, it's in order to solve a problem to improve a pre-existing solution, achieve a goal, perform a specific function. Now we usually think about technology um, as picking up our phones, like an, a smartphone or a tablet or picking up the computer. We don't often think about it in terms of its uses, but really that's what technology is all about. So it's a lot more than perhaps just those devices that we often think about technology in the realm of. So the common theme that I really want you to keep in mind through what I'm talking about over the next sort of 20-30 minutes is an idea of usage. So the practical purposes um, for technology, the solving problems, achieving goals, specific functions, things like that. So within theatre we'll think about that not just in relation to the finished product but also the process and again that's where it really connects into when you're thinking about writing uh, for performance and writing scripts um, or reading scripts is again about that process, not just about technology as a product or something we just use at the end, although that is part of it. Responsive to sorry, responsiveness to societal change, that's also really interesting from the perspective that theatre is often representative of society at a particular moment in time. We think back to Shakespeare and Shakespeare um, when he wrote, wrote for a particular time with the political circumstances at that time and our modern day playwrights are very much the same. So what does that mean for you guys writing for example? Well you need to think about actually putting in what happens every day in the lives of the people and how they use technology. So when you think about theatre in these circumstances you can also think about props. How do you actually walk down a street? Well, you usually, dare I say it, most people are often sending text messages or connecting on Facebook and things like that on a regular basis. Um, and that is something you need to build in when you think about the writing. Also, if you're thinking about reading modern day texts and then how do we represent that on stage 
or how do we present, represent that in performance, you need to think about that in the same way. So building that concept of what is technology is really important when you think about playwriting um, in today's, to reflect today's society. So as I've put in the last statement on that slide, theatre and drama really can be a way to challenge new ways of thinking about technology to, and to push those boundaries of what we just instinctively think technology might be. So I want you to keep these things in mind as I move through a series of examples now of how technology is actually being used today in performance um, and in various theatrical performances. All right, so I want you to have a look at these images. These images come from a production of a play called Goodbye Jamie Boyd, which was produced and performed, and is currently actually being performed at the moment in Western Australia, by a theatre company called Monkey Bar Theatre Company, which are based in Sydney. They do a lot of touring around Australia as well. And this particular show came from a collaboration with a Western Australian dance company called Buzz. Um, Monkey Bar, just a little bit about them, they actually adapt Australian novels and picture books and they actually go through a playwriting process to adapt them into scripts that are then performed. Can I just see a show of hands? Do any of you actually know the book Good by Jamie Boyd? Have you come across that? No? Okay. Goodbye Jamie Boyd is the story of a teenager, Anna, who you see in those images. Now she has schizophrenia. So it's a, it's a book that delves into mental health issues. And she has experiences of delusion or delusions about her dead older brother, um, whose name is Jamie. And he's Anna's companion. Um, he's also her confidant and mentor. But when he becomes, but he, comes because, um, he becomes quite possessive and jealous of her real world relationships and she, he coerces her to self-harm um, and also to hurt the other people that she holds very dear. So she then realises through that process that she needs help. And so the book and then the associated play, which is a one woman play, goes through the, her journey um, of actually realising that these Jamie is not actually real and how to put him to rest. So while in the creative process, the boy you can see in those images playing Jamie, he was actually there in a lot of the rehearsals. So they built up a relationship, the two performers, and it was scripted in that way. However, he wasn't present during the actual performances. They were actually recordings. So and they wanted the recording to be on a number of different surfaces. As you can see there, there's a sheet of paper. She's holding like a bit of cardboard. There's also the projection on the back wall. So this is actually the scale model of the actual design for that uh, performance. And it's, the, it's in um, scale set design. So you can see at the front there, in the middle, there's actually a data projector on the ground. So that was where the projection was coming from. So if you can think about when they were actually writing this script, they knew they wanted projections on various surfaces. And the projections they wanted, there's that red chair, you can see. The actual actor herself, there were projections onto her clothes. There was the sheet at the back. There's also the um, actual um, back, backdrop itself with the, the timber boards. You can see at the um, left there on the side, there's reams of paper. She was holding those up at various positions. They also projected onto the floor. So there were some very significant implications both in the writing of this particular adaptation as well as in the staging. So if you think about the actual set design, they needed clear lines to all of those places because they had that one projector. And I should say that was for a couple of reasons. One, because it was a touring production and they needed to be able to get it in and out very quickly and go into regional places and they didn't necessarily have a lot of access to effective technology, etc. But also because of the cost, because those projectors are up to, uh, upwards of about $6,000 each. So when you think about the set design, they needed clear lines. So they had to write this to allow for those kinds of, um, that kind of positioning. The actual lighting design itself, um, you, they needed to be able to see the projections and I'll go back for a second so you can see they actually needed to be able to see the projections but also see the performer at the same time. 
she as the performer also in her stagecraft which impl impacted on the directing etc had to work out where she was standing so she didn't block the projections either because it was front projected and also the stage management they had to position things around the actual stage to make it effective as well so they had to be absolutely 100% accurate so it couldn't block it so within this production and thinking about embedding technology here it actually was a way to show the inner voices, so it was to solve a problem. And it was a very creative way of doing it that was very seamless for an audience. So they, it allowed the audience to actually see inside Anna's mind. Now I'm going to ask you at the end for some ideas. So I want you to be thinking about some other ways that you might actually, if you were writing this for performance, they use projection. What are some other ways you might have been able to represent these kind of inner voices? So I'm going to ask you that at the end. So that was one way of looking at embedding technology. Okay, this next one is something that's quite different. Um, this was actually a production for preschool and young, young students, while the previous one was for high school and adults. Um, this one is a production called Fluff, which was written by a lady called Christine Johnston. And it was um, performed or put together by a production company called Creation. So this particular performance um, tells the story of the Gingham family, okay, who are concerned um, for all the lost and discarded handmade toys out there in the world and they travel the world to find them. It involves physical theatre and comedy and um, so it, it's a very funny production. But what they do is they, um, they have a home, their home, which you can sort of see in the background there, is all different odd shaped boxes, colourful boxes, that's their home and they welcome these toys to the family. So each toy is introduced one by one. And after seeing a slideshow, which you can see in the middle there, um, of the actual of how the toy came to be lost, they then welcome them into their family by giving them a sound, a movement, um, a piece of music and a nightlight that's personalised for them. It's a bit of, to do with identity as well as one of the key themes in this is belonging and identity. And they also give them a lovely little nice comfy bed which you can see all lined up at the front of that particular image. So technology is embedded in two key ways in this particular, in this particular um, production and is also one of the sort of inspired my title for this little talk as well. So firstly, let's begin with the video. This isn't really anything new. This is something that you see quite a lot in performance these days, the use of video in backdrops and things like that. But the screen isn't actually visible until something's projected onto it. Um, and it's sort of designed, so when you're thinking about a playwriting perspective, they used it to sort of fill the gap to help in the storytelling process. So it's almost like little mini stories within the broader story. So it's, a, it's another technique in playwriting. And it's also for younger kids, it changes the focus on a, on a um, regular basis, which allows um, main, maintenance of interest from the audience as well. Now, the second type of technology um, was the use of the iPad. And this is, was really quite innovative, what they did, and really kind of, it was, oh, I think it was absolutely fantastic. So this guy you can see on the right side of the screen, he, had, he was also taking the technical role of the sound technician. So normally a sound technician is located behind the scenes, you never see them. He was the sound technician but he was also part of the performance itself. So what he did was he actually went around and recorded sounds from the audience during the performance itself. So they built in interactivity. And so what he did was recorded the sounds and then using the iPad like a sampling tool, a bit like a mixer, he actually um, played those sounds back and mashed them all together so they became like a rap. So imagine sounds like um, sort of sounds of frogs um, rebipping through the, in a forest or um, sounds of, there was a sound of, um, well, one of them was sort of farting and things like that as well. So they made a lot of fun sounds, which was funny for the kids and really interactive. But they built that into the writing process of what they were doing and they actually built in that te the technology as a tool within their scripting. So they were able to draw that on. So just in summary, for this particular way of embedding technology, there were two key ways they did it. The first one was to vary the storytelling medium itself. And the second way was actually to provide unique interactivity um, in a really fun and engaging way but also a very immediate way so it wasn't just 
audience give us some sounds, they then heard their own sounds back. So they actually became a part of the performance, which was a really fantastic way of doing it. Okay, so the third way of thinking about embedded technology, again, we come back to Monkey Bar Theatre Company with a production they did of Fox, which is a picture book by Margaret Wilde and Ron Brooks. Um, the other one was actually the National Theatre of Great Britain's production of War Horse, um, which is a really amazing, unique performance that is still currently playing in Sydney at the moment and is played in, in theatres all over the world. So with Fox, um, the unique emphasis in this one was very much about the set. So they used projection, there was no set for Fox, but they used projection and they used that to create the backdrop itself but also building it into the script. So I want to draw your attention particularly to the image on the top left there where you can see the face at the back and the guy in the red coat at the front. All right, so in that particular scene, the camera was live on that lady and she was off stage, that particular character, and she played the crow in this situation and he was playing the fox. But she interacted live with him. The audience could see her face but she was actually being streamed live through a camera as the backdrop. And that was for mood, it was for effect, and it was really fascinating the way they did it and very, very powerful from an audience's perspective. In the other image there, we can see all the little black lines. That was using um, the projection as a backdrop and they were actually rear projected as opposed to Goodbye Jamie Board when it was front projected. But these were written into the script. They were deliberate in that design and creative process of building these particular scripts. In War Horse, again, projection was used for mood and also set enhancement. So you can see in the top image there, there's like a white strip. That was actually, that is actually like a cloud. It's like a cloud shape um, suspended um, up in the air. And at all different times through the production, they use moving sketches as well as still images and things on that to enhance what's happening on stage. And in this case, the actors down the bottom, they're, part, they're moving forward as they're sort of coming out of the trenches and moving forward because it's a story about um, World War II. So they're moving through the trenches. Um, and up above is almost a reflection of what's happening on stage to enhance the mood and the set. But also interesting, you know, back in the beginning, I mentioned the definition of technology. And one of them is a response to need. The other image there is actually a puppet. And it's the cult um, size of the actual star of the, really, of the war horse. Um, and and his, the horse's name is Joey. And he, that's Joey as a cult. And that's actually, you can see the key actor at the front. But the other three people you can see are actually the puppeteers, but they actually built the most amazing horses. And I would urge you to actually go online and have a look at some of the clips of these horses because you do not even notice the puppeteers. They are so real from the twitching of the ears and the flicking of a tail. It's quite spectacular. But they created these puppets from a need. The adult horses are full-size horses and the actors actually ride them even though they are manipulated by puppeteers. It is quite spectacular. But again, it's modern technology enabling these kinds of things. So while the others are a bit more like digital technology, here's another example of technology itself. So it was really powerful. Okay, so just in summary for this part of the talk, and I have two more examples I want to give you of technology for performance. Um, in this situation, uh, sorry, in these ones, we're looking at the idea of um, technology in performance, so embedded within the performance itself. So you need to think about it, especially from a playwriting perspective, from the creative concept. How are you going to think about technology and how might you build it in into any writing? Also the design. So when you're writing something, often you come, you have in your head as the playwright a design. So the set and staging is really, really important to think about. That idea of fostering interactivity, you can use technology to do that. And it's really important to think, is that a key priority in my thinking about um, the writing of performance? And also if you're taking a script to actually stage it, is that something that's important and how might I use technology? Is that the most appropriate way? Mood creation and set enhancement, as I showed you within some of the last ones. And video and backdrops are uh, some examples of how you can do that. And also about 
props. So the actual reflection of today's society and the role technology plays in 21st century society, it's pervasive in everything we do. So you need to make sure that's reflected naturally in any kind of playwriting or presentation or adaption. You may have come across the work of Bell Shakespeare. Has anyone seen any of the work that Bell Shakespeare have done? Online or face to face? Yeah, a couple of you have, fantastic. Um, they actually adapt well, works from Shakespeare's time into modern day and they use a lot of technology in what they're doing and often a very hybrid perspective on that. So again, really good to look at some of those kind of companies that do that kind of work as well. So again, in summary, implications, you've got set design, you've got direction, performance, stage management and also venue choice. And can it actually be done in the venue that you've got? Or if you want it to be, what do you need to do to make that happen? Okay, so there's now technology for performance. So this is another way to think about it. So I want to shift your head, you know, your head slightly to think about technology for performance. And there's two key ways we're going to look at this, as I said at the beginning, audience interactivity and performer interactivity. Okay, so the images you're seeing here actually came from some of my students at the University of Technology, Sydney. I was working with them on this concept of connected theatre. And in this case, we had performers at one end, our end, performing via video conferencing, a bit like our talk today, but they were actually performing for an audience in another location, also looking at the video conferencing. So thinking back to the implications of technology in performance, this also had some very significant implications for the writing and the design of um, performance itself and scripts. So in the creative process we knew we had two cameras we could use and they were both fixed but we could still switch between them which almost gave us instantly two different sets that we could use, two different kind of locations we could draw on if we wanted to and the top right image actually shows one of the scenes versus um, where we hid a particular performer behind some screens versus a broader stage kind of an area. Also in terms of the staging and um, direction itself, there was actually visual distortion. You know, a bit like you guys, and I saw, I know people were playing around with the cameras and things before, but it almost can look curved at times and straight lines don't necessarily look straight and curves don't necessarily look curved. So they had to, when they were actually designing it, they had to take that into consideration. And also this idea of like the people at the front are bigger than the people at the back. So how can we play on almost a concept of film where you come up close to the camera versus being further away? And how might we build that into the writing and the staging as well? The other thing is within performance on a stage, you get natural audience response. So you hear laughs from the audience, etc. And you often want audience to engage and this was designed for young people so we had to build in by sheer nature of what performance for young people is the actual component of interactivity so how are we going to make that happen especially when they where their where their screen was like I can look straight up I'm looking into the camera but I can also see you for them looking into the camera they couldn't see the audience so either they were looking at the audience and therefore not connecting with their audience or vice versa. So it was something they had to think about in their staging or, and performance of any particular um, performance. So the other issue was actually delay. There's often a few moments delay. So when they were waiting for laughter or some sort of response, they had to build that in, but also be very natural in their performance. So this is a very interesting way of actually doing performance and we had very specific things they had to take into account when they were writing for this medium. The next people I want to talk to you about took it one step further. Now these are images of a production called Shadow Dreams which has been on quite recently down in Tasmania and it's a collaboration between Terrapin Puppet Theatre and the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra. And what was so unique about this particular performance, which was different to what I was doing with the students at UTS, is that in this particular situation, you had two theatres. In each theatre, you had an orchestra, an audience and performers. And those two 
that and in each of those places, one was in Launceston, one was in Hobart, they performed simultaneously a production. So in one theatre, the audience saw one of the boys' stories. His name was Dale and he is an Aboriginal boy. And they saw him live with the, produ with the projection of Pete, the white boy. While in the other location, they saw Pete live and the actual projection of Dale. So this story is actually about two boys. One lives on a hill in the bush and the other lives in a city, on a hill in a city. And they both go to bed and it's a, it's a story about Tasmania. They both go to bed one night and accidentally have each other's dreams. So the orchestra, there was a score that went underneath it and there was also shadow puppetry. And I'm going to show you a little video, a bit of this to finish up in a minute. What was really unique about this was that they were aware of the delay that I talked about before. The score was actually written and the script written to take that into account. So you, I want to draw your attention to the image at the top left and the bottom in the middle. And those two images show the same thing happening, but you can see what the different audiences would have seen. So it's a really, really unique way of thinking about performance and performer interactivity. Because at the very end, which is the one, the um, image at the right at the top, the boys actually, for the first time, which was right near the end, actually looked at each other. The other issue of this, oh, sorry, the other thing that happened in this one is that they also used that hybrid film theatre kind of a divide where they actually came up close and used the cameras as a tool to help focus what they wanted the audience to see and think. So it was really, really unique. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a, a short video of this. It goes for about five minutes and then I'll just come back and finish as well. So here you can see the boys and you can see it switches between the two venues and also builds in the shadow puppetry. see their use of the cameras as well. Here in particular you can see where she is in location to the camera and now seeing what the other screen would have been seeing of her.
Okay. So. Oh, oh goodness me. Sorry about that. I'll just get to the last screen. So that's me. So you, that's a really nice practical example um, of some really innovative and really interesting ways that they've actually designed a performance using technology but to really beautifully um, engage in different ways in different places. So here's all the links to all the different um, companies and things that I talked about today. Um, and I guess you can unmute now if you like and open up if you've got any questions. I did ask you at the beginning, did, did anyone have any, um, any ideas about another way to represent, for example, the inner voices for Anna? in Goodbye Jamie Boyd. Have you got any other ideas of the ways you might do something like that? If you were actually writing an adaptation and you knew you wanted to represent in a voice, what might be another way you might do that? A voiceover. A voiceover? Yep. Yeah. I mean, so video conferencing and actually designing, I mean, I would challenge you. I think it's a really wonderful way to actually connect through performance is actually to think about writing a script designed for this kind of medium that we're using now. Um, it would be really interesting, it would be interesting to take an existing script and say well how would I adapt that for this kind of a context. I mean you've obviously got a fixed camera in your room there. So as we've said, you know, the people closer to the front are much bigger than the people further away and you would be able to see yourselves and be able to be, and be aware of that. So I would actually challenge you and I would love you to get back in contact with me to actually send me some images or some footage or I'm happy to connect with you and actually see what that works and feels like because it is a really um, wonderful way to, to design and develop performance. Well, thank you very much. It's been lovely to um, be able to talk to you all today.